So I'm in the middle of recording and editing my long-term review of MX Linux, and I've been promoting this and teasing this for quite a while, and I promise that it's going to be released sometime this week. But during the process of recording that, I was starting to talk about KDE Plasma because I've been using KDE Plasma while doing the review. And I was going to talk about my qualms and stuff with Plasma in that review, but I decided to pull it out and actually just do a dedicated video about my time with Plasma over the last month. Because I think that it deserves a little bit more time than just a few seconds in a longer review of something else. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I've been using Plasma almost full time now since the end of December. So it's almost a month. Now I have used my tiling window managers a few times during that time. So it hasn't been 100% full time. So I just want to be completely honest about that. But for the most part, I've been spending most of my time in Plasma. And I have some thoughts. Now, when I first used, started using Linux, I did what everybody does. I floated around to all of the different desktop environments. I avoided window managers like to play because they were very intimidating at the time I was new to Linux and it just seemed like something that was really too hard for me to get into. So I was stuck to the main players in the desktop environment space. I, I used GNOME, I used Plasma, I used Mate, Budgie, XFCE, and all of them. Like I switched back and forth like crazy. But over time I found that Plasma was my favorite. And I was one of the biggest KD Plasma fanboys out there, I loved it. And one of the reasons why was because of the amount of customization you can do. Anybody who's watched the channel for any amount of time will know that I like to tweak things. I like to change stuff. I like to customize stuff. So the fact that out of all the desktop environments, KD has the most ability to be customized kind of really me meant that it was right up my alley. So Plasma was my favorite back then, but then I started using tiling window managers and then I got to be more of a minimalist when it comes to stuff and more of a nerd when it comes to customizing things and was more interested in customizing stuff through a configuration file than a, a GUI and Plasma fell by the wayside. I haven't actually used Plasma or really any floating window manager slash desktop environment probably for three years since I started using tiling window managers. And coming back into Plasma and using it full time has been really, really weird. It's like, it's very jarring because the workflow that I have in like DWM or i3 or whatever is completely different than in floating window manager slash desktop environment like Plasma. The windows are all over the damn place. They they're not tiled. I mean, you can make tiling and stuff obviously, but for the most part, the workflow is everything's just kind of layered on top of each other and getting to stuff is much different than what I'm used to. I'm very much used to using a keyboard centric workflow and I find myself using the mouse more in Plasma. So it's been really weird. So first, let me talk about the positive stuff. I, I've been trying, but mostly failing to make my videos at least start more on the positive stuff. Now, I'm Obviously, the things that I rant about are almost always negative, so those are more negative videos. But for the times where there is positive stuff, I want to kind of lead with that. So, of the positive things, I will say that customizability still remains a huge thing of KDE Plasma. I think it's fantastic. So, let me take you to my KDE Plasma desktop so you can actually find something to look at other than me. And this is what my KDE Plasma desktop looks like right now. And it's not anything special. I've just went through and did a Nord Rice and not even all that great because there's you know no latte dock or anything like that it's just kind of plain but i like it the thing is is that as much as i like customizing stuff i found that i actually prefer the more traditional kde layout than something that looks like mac os or something like that i used to always put a latte dock on there and make it look like mac os but i don't do that anymore this turned out to be fine and in terms of customizing all this stuff. I love the fact that there's built-in themes. I finally learned how to use Covantum. Back when I was first using Plasma, I had no clue how to use Covantum. I, I'm pretty sure that Covantum at that point was just getting started uh, and it was different than it is now, But or maybe I was just more of an idiot back then than I am now. Was able to figure that out this time and got that all working and stuff. Got Blur and all that stuff working. I was able to go through and customize the workspaces. I was able to go through and customize the key bindings that I needed to do. So, like for example, I have Super Enter in order to get to a terminal. I have Super W in order to open up a browser. And I have Super Q to close stuff. So I was able to bring over some of the workflow 
that I'm familiar with in a window manager to KDE, and it's made the transition a little bit easier. So one of the things that I've had a problem with is windows being lost. Like for example, on this monitor, it has become a catch-all for pretty much everything. On this one workspace over here, which you can actually see, I have OBS, I have uh, Audacity open, I have Todoist, I have a terminal, I have Discord, uh, I have C uh, Crusader open over there. It's <laughs> absolute mess. And I would never do that in a window manager. So the work, like I said, the workflow is completely different. But it's not bad. It's just different. Is the is the point I was make is the point I need to make there is that I'm not entirely opposed to it. It just it goes against my habit of organizing my windows in certain workspaces. So let's next talk about workspaces. I have workspaces installed or not installed, but enabled on Plasma, and I can have four of them. And uh, you can see them moving their craziness with all the animations and stuff. I, but I, I will say I, I still haven't got rid of. The, I should get rid of the animations because they kind of bother me. But I've just left them. And the thing is, I don't use workspaces when I use Plasma. I, it pains me to say this. Everybody knows that I'm a workspace guy. Like I, when I have DWM here, I use all 18 workspaces a lot. And the, the thing about BSPWM, when I use that, I usually have 20 workspaces and I use a lot of them. And I organize my windows and I know where everything's at and all this stuff. It feels like when I'm in a, a, like a floating window manager, I don't use workspaces hardly at all. Every once in a while, I will remember that they're there. But for the most part, all my windows just remain in this first workspace and I'll tab through stuff and it just, you know, it's fine. I will say that I have mixed feelings about the settings panel. So when I first used Plasma way back when, I thought that the, the settings panel was a mess, but I liked the fact that it had a lot of options. So I kind of overlooked the fact that it was a mess. It has gotten more organized in the time period between then and now. I will say that it's also gotten easier to search. So if I find something that I need to search, so let's just say I need to search for uh, monitors, I can go through and do that. Like even though monitors isn't in that title, it knows that I'm looking for displays. That's way better. That's miles and a way better. It, but it is still a mess. Like it, there's just way too much here. They need to bury some of the stuff into like sub menus, like they used to. Now everything seems to be on a uh, like a top level menu, and there's just a few sub menus. They've, they've gotten rid of a few of the sub menus, and it makes it a little bit more complicated. I feel. And one of the things I will notice is like I've used KD Plasma a few times throughout the last year, not like as a daily driver, but as part of like a distro review or something. And I've noticed that every single distro seems to do the settings panel just a little bit different. They tweak it, or they're using a different version or something. And I know the Plasma guys are always tweaking this. So it makes it a little bit confusing for me. So I don't know if this is the most recent version that, where they're at or if there's, you know, um, an improved version that would come if I wasn't using a Debian-based distro. It's confusing. And I know that this isn't actually the most recent because in the most recent, you can actually choose between light and dark theme on this, like, beginner's page. And you can't do that here. So this isn't the most recent version. And like, but the thing is, is that there's just so much here. And... While I like it, I can highly see, I can very much see why anyone who's new to Linux would find this horribly overwhelming. It's, there's just so much there. Now, I mean, the top level alone should all be combined into an appearance section. That's, it, it should be. And the thing is, is that they don't do a good job of differentiating what any of this stuff here, here means. So we have a global theme, a plasma style. What is a plasma style? What's the difference between a plasma style and a global theme? What's the difference between an application style and a plasma style? What's the difference between an application style and a global style? You get the point, right? They've made it too complicated. Now, I understand from a customizability standpoint, the ability to go through and customize different parts of the theme makes sense. But when you're new to something, the fact that they have multiple things that appear to basically do the same thing, that they don't do the same thing, but that they appear to do the same thing, is overwhelming and confusing. The same thing with having something that's called colors. So basically what colors does is it allows you to go through and minutely control the colors of everything. That should not be a top level option at all. That should be buried below because the vast majority of people are never going to use it. The new people just want to set a theme. So 
have a themes level and then everything else can be buried a little bit. I, that's what I would do. And then you can do fonts and icons and send cursor stuff. Those things aren't confusing at all. I mean, that every distro pretty much has, or every desktop environment pretty much has those. So I guess, the, I mean, I was trying to be positive, but I've kind of meandered into the, some of the negative stuff too. But I'm of two minds about the, of the, the settings panel. I like the fact that there's so many options, but I also think that it's still entirely too confusing. Now, there are a couple negative things that I just need to to bring up. So the first thing is that out of the box... KDE Plasma is very good on resources and stuff like that. It's very good when it's just sitting at idle and it's doing nothing. But I have noticed that once you've gone through and done some theming, once you've gone through and using some of the KDE applications, it tends to eat up a lot of memory for some reason. I'm not sure why. Right now it seems to be doing okay. Uh, and it's not all the time, but some KDE applications tend to take up a lot of memory. And sometimes it's just the theme that takes up a lot of memory. I'm not sure why that is either. Some icon themes also seem to take up more memory than they should. And you'll, you'll see that if you open up like HTOP, you'll see that Plasma is taking up way, way more memory than normal. And I found that it was actually the icon theme that I was using. Why that is, I don't know. I've also noticed on this particular version of Plasma that KWIN crashes sometimes. It doesn't happen often, but I'll, I'll, be, I'll come back from wherever and uh, I'll wake up my computer and I'll notice that everything has a black bar around it. I'll try to put a, uh, an example of this because I took a screenshot of it. Everything has a black bar around it and uh, screen tearing is cra crazy again and it's really slow. So I actually have to go through and either kill KWIN or log out and log back in in order to get everything working back together again. And that's annoying. Now, whether or not that's an MX Linux problem or it's a KDE problem, I don't know, but that is still there. Overall, my experience has been, as as I said before, it's been jarring because I'm not used to it. I love the customizability. I love the fact that you can go through and install a lot of widgets. You can change is the menu into different different types of menus. You can go through and add different types of panels and stuff like that. That stuff all remains fantastic and it I think it's superior to any other desktop environment in that way. I know with like XFCE and Cinnamon and stuff like that, you can go through and do a lot of the same stuff, but it feels better and more built in, more part of the desktop environment in Plasma than it does in any other desktop environment. I like that stuff. Uh, in terms of the other stuff, like I said before, with the, with the settings panel, it still is a mess. Now, if you listen to the podcast either last week or the week before, Tyler was talking about how the plas the settings panel was a mess and overwhelming for him as well. So I know that it's not just me who thinks this. Like, it is an overwhelming kind of mess. Now, it, like I said, it has gotten better over the years, but at least in this particular version, it's not great. And that is kind of kind of a, a bummer because it's still... It's one of its best features, right? Right. It's the all the settings and stuff that KDE comes with is one of the things that makes KDE KDE. It makes if you took all the customizability out of KDE, you'd be left with GNOME, right? It, it wouldn't be all that good, and that wouldn't be a good thing. It it, I don't want them to take the customizability out of it. I just want them to make it easier to understand and navigate through the the menus. I, the one thing I did not cover in this. Uh, small review or whatever is discover and let's take a look at discover actually before we leave this is discover and the reason why i didn't cover it is because i don't use it okay with mx linux they have their own package installer i use that instead or i just used apt in the terminal discover has always been a pain point for kde plasma for many years it is or at least it was not good that putting it kindly it was not good it has gotten somewhat better so like if you used to be if you clicked on an application you wouldn't get this nice little panel with screenshots and stuff like that it would just be blank stuff and uh, you know sometimes they didn't have settings they definitely did not have reviews half the stuff that they were supposed to have was broken a lot of times it used a lot of memory a lot of times the search didn't work you get the point it used to be bad i want to say that it's good now it, but it's it's not i i don't understand how the same people who designed the settings panel to look like this and have all these categories of stuff has managed to go through and put all the categories for this stuff buried in a submenu. It, it's really weird. Now I understand. Obviously, it's easier to it's easy to go through and find the categories, but it's still a click, right? And if you don't know to do that, I mean, why not just have the categories here? And 
it doesn't make sense to me, right? It's still a little weird. Also, I would just suggest that they steal from GNOME just a little bit. Go through and make their application store look more like a store. I mean, they have a feature section, but it just looks like a list. You know what I mean? Have, have a, a rotating, like, slider of stuff there. Make it look f a little bit fancy. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It just... It doesn't feel good to me, and I never use it, because it has gotten better. I love the fact that the reviews thing is in ratings thing is here, uh, and it works, and people are actually using it. Maybe it's my past experiences with this Discover that is coloring my experience with it now. And and actually, I can say that that's exactly true because I, I didn't use it all that much. I just I looked at it like, oh, this looks almost exactly the same as it did last time, only with um, more pictures, uh, and then left it behind. So that's Discover. So. Just to wrap this up, I've been going on for a little bit too long, but the, the the bottom line is, will I continue to use Plasma after my MX Linux review is over? The answer to that question is no. And the reason why isn't because Plasma is bad. I just want to get that out there. Like Plasma is not bad. I started my, my video out this time talking about how the experience for me has gone. And that's basically the reason why I'm going back to Window Managers because I feel less organized with Plasma. That's just absolutely the case. My windows are all over the place and getting to them isn't easy, right? So you can have an expose like blowout mode where it shows you all your open windows and then you can click on the window that you're looking for. You can do that or you can do that alt tabbing that I was showing earlier, which is what I really usually do. And you can click there as well or you can just alt keep alt tabbing through the stuff and then get to the thing you want. That's way more work than I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to go to a certain workspace and know that what's on that workspace is the things that I need, right? So for example, on Workspace 6, I always want OBS and Audacity. Now, I could go through and actually use workspaces here like I usually do, but I don't. And I don't really know why. I think some of it's going to be the animations and I can turn those off, but I haven't. Some of it is just going to be habit because things open up willy-nilly places, I just leave them wherever they spawn. And that's another thing that I, <laughs> that I, good Lord. This video is going to go on for a while, but I, I need to talk about this for a minute. When you spawn something, you never know where it's going to spawn. Now, and that's always been a problem with KD Plasma right from the beginning. Every time I used it, this was a problem. But it used to be that there used to be a setting oh, that was like uh, spawning always follows mouse or focus always follows mouse or something. where the, So that where, whenever you opened up a window or an application it would always spawn underneath the mouse. And that setting is actually still here in KD Plasma. They've called it something different. It's harder to find, but it's still there, and I enabled it. The problem is, is that Plasma doesn't follow it. Like, it doesn't follow the rule. So, when I like, a spawn a terminal, sometimes it'll open up on the one monitor, sometimes it'll open up on another monitor, and it, it doesn't matter where the mouse is. Uh, sometimes it'll open up on another workspace. That was really weird. Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most of the time, it just depends on, you know, it stays on the same workspace. It just switches monitors randomly wherever, wherever something spawns. And that drives me bonkers, man. It's like, it's uh, it's the biggest problem. I'm surprised I almost forgot to talk about this. Like, this is the thing that drives me nuts the most about Plasma is that you never know where something's going to spawn. Like, for example, right when I was going to begin to uh, op uh, start this video, I spawned OBS and OBS spawned exactly where I needed to spawn, where the mouse was on this monitor. And then the next thing I wanted to do was spawn Audacity because I record the audio separate. And I had to hide the mouse over here. So I opened up KRunner, which KRunner is fantastic. I love KRunner. It's awesome. I, sh I should talk about that too, but I did a video on that. So you should look at, watch that video. But anyways, I, I spawned KRunner. I typed in Audacity, hit enter. And instead of doing over here where the mouse was, it opened up on the mon other monitor. So I had to move the Audacity to this monitor where I wanted it. <laughs> it's annoying. And it's not just Audacity. It's literally pretty much anything. Like so, sometimes when I spawn uh, Discord, this monitor will be focused. I'll hit the Discord icon in the taskbar, and it'll spawn over here. Sometimes it'll do the opposite. There's no rhyme or no reason to it. It doesn't make any sense. And like I said, there's a setting in there that says, you know, fo focus follows mouse. It doesn't follow it. It's, it has to be a bug, but it's still very annoying. So... This has turned into a rant video, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that because for the vast majority of my experience here, I liked using Plasma. It was good for me to get away from a tiling window manager because I was kind of taking like DWM for granted. Because DWM is really good, and it became my daily it became my daily driver, and I spent all this time customizing it and getting all the key bindings and scratch pads and all that stuff where I needed to go. And 
I was kind of taking it for granted. So coming, uh, going away from it and uh, using Plasma has been really good for me because it kind of has made me realize exactly what I love about Tiling Window Manager. And it, it's going to allow me to kind of enjoy going back to that when I'm done with this. The one other thing I should talk about is scratch pads. So I use scratch pads like crazy. And KDE doesn't have scratch pads. So the one thing is go that's good about this is that, first of all, I've gotten used to just opening up terminals like crazy. Like, I have like five or six terminals just open up here all the time. And I do that in DWM as well, but I always have certain things that are in scratch, scratch pads. So the one thing about KDE is that you can find other applications to do basically the same thing. So if I hit F4, I get Uwaki or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, you quake. You, I don't know how the hell you pronounce it, but whatever. It's just a drop drop down terminal, and it works fine. And it has tabs, so I can go through and you open up Pulse Mixer here, and then open up a tab with uh, like NCMCPP or whatever the hell it's called, or or HTOP in another tab, and then I can always just have that there. It's not as good as a regular scratch pad that's always assigned to a certain application by a key binding, but it was good enough for me. So uh, that is it for this video. I probably could go on for another half an hour talking about my new little things, but overall my experience was okay. It was just very jarring, and it reminded me of why I like Tiling Window Manager so much. I don't think that I would enjoy using Plasma full-time long-term. Like, longer than this, I would be okay with it. Like, if Plasma was the only option out there, I'd be fine with it. I don't think I could say that about GNOME. I think I'd have so many problems with the lack of customizability with GNOME. I'd have problems with it. I have lived in GNOME for a while, and it was fine, uh, but I like Plasma miles and away better than GNOME. And I could live in Plasma if it was the only option, but because it's not the only option and, and tiling window managers exist, I don't see myself being able to be happy with Plasma long term, and that's more of just a me problem. It's just, I think I would have to completely rework my workflow in Plasma in order to start utilizing workspaces in order to get away from this whole... I shove all my work windows on one monitor and just leave them there. I, I That's not working for me. It's just not. I feel disorganized and uh, it, it feels bloated to me. <laughs> I'm just going to be, you know, it just it feels like it's not, it, it, it slows down my workflow quite a bit. And that's more of a me thing, like, because I it could use the workspaces, but I don't. And I don't know why. It's like, it's maybe because they're not in my face all the time. Like with a tiling window manager, you have the numbers up there all the time. So they're always in my face. But I'm also used to using the keyboard, and with the tiling, with the floating window manager, floating desktop environment, I use the mouse all the time. So changing the workspace makes me go back to the keyboard, and uh, it's a, it's a weird mixture of input mechanisms. It's weird. So, anyways, that is it for this video. I've rambled on for quite a while. Thanks for watching. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. Also, you can if you have comments on Plasma, you can leave those in the comment section below. Make sure you like and subscribe. I really do appreciate everybody who does that. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Dev on East Coast Web, Patrick L. Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson Tool, Steve A, CyberGuy Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Dated, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter Ray, Crucible, and Dark Bandit 6. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.